Today, Ukraine released gripping footage of the moment one of its sharpshooters reportedly taking a shot from an impressive distance of 8,891 feet, the length of 26 Wembley football pitches. Shocking video showed the Russian soldier dropping to the ground after the skilled Ukrainian sniper took the long-range shot. The Office of Strategic Communications of the Armed Forces of Ukraine said the sniper came very close to taking the world record for the longest combat kill. They said, The occupier was eliminated by a precise shot of our special forces from a distance of 2,710 meters 8,891 feet, a distance that now ranks second in the world ranking, confirmed by the command of the armed forces. Ukrainian marksmen are using some of the most powerful rifles ever made the 6 feet 5 inches Snipex Alligator and the 5 feet 9 inch Sniper T-Rex. Both have a muzzle speed of 3,200 feet per second, meaning it would take just 3 seconds to hit the target. The weapons can fire a 14.5 mm bullet over ranges of more than 4 miles. The National Guard of Ukraine said, with the onset of dusk, snipers of Special Forces units of the National Guard go hunting. Very quick and accurate work by one of them last night. The current standing world record for a long-range sniper kill is 3,540 meters, made by a Canadian Special Operations sniper in Iraq in 2017. Meanwhile, the enemy is improving the fortification equipment of the defensive lines on the left bank of the Dnipro River. Russian forces continue offensive operations in the Bakhmut, Avdiivka and Novopavlovka directions. During the day, the invaders launched 14 airstrikes and about 10 MLRS attacks. Areas of more than 15 settlements in Donetsk, Dnipropetrovsk and Sumy region came under enemy fire. In the Volyn and Polisia directions, the situation has not changed significantly. The Republic of Belarus continues to support the Russian armed aggression against Ukraine. The formation of a joint Russian-Belarusian group of troops is currently underway. There is still a threat of missile and air strikes on the critical infrastructure of Ukraine from the territory of the Republic of Belarus. In other directions, the enemy used tanks, mortars and artillery of various types to shell settlements. According to the General Staff, the defense forces of Ukraine struck the area of Russian troops built up in Luhansk region, namely, in the area of Hursk village. As a result of the attack, 27 invaders were eliminated and 18 more wounded. Aircraft of the Defense Forces of Ukraine struck eight clusters of personnel, weapons and military equipment, as well as three anti-aircraft missile systems. Units of missile and artillery forces of the Defense Forces struck an enemy command post. Eleven clusters of manpower, weapons and military equipment, as well as other important military objects of the invaders. Meanwhile, Russia is seeking a short truce a proposal Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky vehemently dismissed as it would allow Moscow's forces to regain strength after suffering a series of battlefield defeats. Officials in Moscow have repeatedly said they were ready to engage in peace talks without any conditions, but it is not clear if they have made a formal ceasefire offer as mentioned by Zelensky on Friday. Mr. Zelensky said, Russia is now looking for a short truce a respite to regain strength. Someone may call this the war's end, but such a respite will only worsen the situation. A truly real, long-lasting, and honest peace can only be the result of the complete demolition of Russian aggression. The United States has said only the Ukrainian leader can decide when to open peace talks with Russia, 
rejecting the notion it was pressing Kiev to negotiate an end to the nearly nine-month war sparked by Moscow's invasion. According to the UK Ministry of Defense, Russian forces in Ukraine are covering up their humiliating loss in the city of Kherson and other parts of Ukraine. Inexperienced recruits are being put in charge of units that have suddenly found themselves without a commander-in-chief, the mod has said. In an update on the war on Sunday morning, the mod wrote, Russia's recent withdrawal from west of Kherson was conducted in relatively good order compared to previous major Russian retreats during the war. During the retreat, vehicle losses were likely in the tens rather than hundreds, while much kit that was left behind was successfully destroyed by Russian forces to deny it to Ukraine. This relative success is likely partially due to a more effective, single operational command under General Sarjai Shurovikin. However, the force remains riven by poor junior and mid-level leadership and cover-up culture. For example, in recent months, two companies subordinate to the Eastern Military District fled after their commander was killed. Other officers likely lead in an attempt to cover up the incident. It comes as Prime Minister Rishi Sunak promised 125 anti-aircraft guns and other air defense technology as he made an unannounced visit Saturday's first to Ukraine's snow-blanketed capital for talks with Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky. Зарядка. 